So, big fella. Everyday hour number nine, I believe. I think so, anyway. Well, yeah. ha- I'll have to double check that, but uh, how's your week been? It's been good, man. I mean, yeah, have you really, really, because my work fluctuates, you know, depending on what clients are available mm. or what's going on. But, you know, this week's actually been a pretty chill week and I'm pretty much okay with that. Well, yesterday was really busy, but Monday and Tuesday it was fine, man. Mm. I had a, had a bit of fun. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more sleep. Getting the more well for a long time, you didn't get much sleep at all. You yeah. used to always come into uni and you'd had bloodshot. Re- you look like you smoked a shit ton of weed. <laughs> <laughs> you would. You would like. Yeah. You would look like that. But like, because you, you have such a crazy schedule sometimes. Yeah. I, well, if that's true. Speaking of that, uh, I actually there was one time in the library, a kid, this weird nerdy kid, came up to me and he just put fifty dollars on my desk. I was like, can I help you guys? How much you got? I was like, what do you mean, man? He's like, don't lie to me, man. I can see the eyes from like a mile away. You, what, what shit are you on? And I was like, oh, okay, mate, take the money and go, man, because I ain't, because I don't have anything. It was like that, so. Yeah. She just took the money and gone back to sleep. <laughs> she was just like, yeah. She just, you should have just, she should have just gone, okay, rolled it up, put it in your palm, just went. Just going back to sleep. And yeah. yeah. Iron grip on that. 50 <laughs> and he would have fucked off. Just grab a plant, just shred it up into a bag and just give it to him or something yeah. like that. Perhaps tea, maybe I don't know. Give him a tea bag. Yeah. Give him a little tea bag. And yeah. Do you remember those days though when I actually used to rock up to uni and then we would have to go do dancing or something like that at uni mm. and then we'd have all these other classes. I used to fall asleep a lot in lectures. Yeah. It was because you literally, because... Well, one thing we know about the human body is it's not designed to sit. It's actually designed to move. We've yeah. constantly got to be moving. And I'm always moving around, you know, from work mm. to uni. We do a lot of prac. And then the moment I go hit that lecture, if I don't have like a full can of Monster or a couple of coffees, I will, you've got cra- right now. I will crash. Mm. I will crash. And I remember a couple of friends used to actually like play, what is it, shoulder bumps with me when my head would go to one side. They just... Shoulder bump me back up, for to the other side. Shoulder bump me back up. <laughs> well, you come into uni with bloodshot, red eyes, but there, there is a thing with the human body where we are actually designed to keep moving, keep moving, and then when we are sitting, is either is to rest and digest, and it's either it's either to eat, mm-hmm. to poop, or go to or mainly go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Especially when you've got a huge amount of workload. As soon as you're, if you're always on the go and you're always moving, you're working out and you're exercising, you're walking to class everywhere and things like that. By the time you know you're sitting down in these, you know, late afternoon lectures, you just you are going to go to sleep, especially labs. I mean, lab. I can't imagine how many times I was in a like a biology lab or physiology lab, and I was like, I was so tired, I couldn't do it. I, mm-hmm. Like especially because some of my labs were crazy. Some of my labs were like seven hours long. Seven hours. Seven long. seven hour labs. Jesus and, um, Christ, what do you do with that time? Seven hours. They were broken up into like three three and a bit hours and then some people go to lunch or something like that and then you've got three and a three and a bit hours afterwards and it was so fucking funny because you always had a character in physiology and um one bloke would do the prac he would go to the pub at lunch (laughs) get smashed (laughs) sorry there was a there was a mosquito that i went for went to whack um and then I don't know, very annoying while you're doing a podcast. Okay. Uh, he would go to the pub and he would get smashed. And he, he would, would come back. And he would come back. Yeah. And you could tell he was not the same man before lunch. He was he was he was so sloshed. Absolutely smashed. You know who you just remind me of? Who? The, but your our buddy, the one who went to a party or something like the night before and then he rocked up to a lab and he yelled out, I'm still fucking drunk. Who said that? You know. Who was that? Could we say his name on the podcast? Um, Sam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sam, Sam if, you <laughs> if you're watching or listening to this right now, yeah, man, you're a legend. That was legendary. But he just rocked. He went to a party, got absolutely hammered, and then he like, had like three, four hours of sleep or something. And he yeah, we'd be, we'd be in the lecture, and he was, he was still, he was like, I'm, I'm, I'm still drunk. Yeah. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still feeling it right now. Yeah. But that's how you survive uni sometimes, you know, know. Uh, with the amount of like pressure that's put on you all the time, um, especially when you're a young adult and you've got taverns in the, in the uni. Well, a lot of people, what, you're going to ask them not to go have a few cheeky pints? I, I only went to that tavern 
three times. I went a few times, but it wasn't mainly to. It was mainly to uh, like just eat, and I love playing pool yeah. there. It was uh, there's some. Uh, I'm got, not gonna lie, the tavern there was a really good way to unwind. It's mm. just if you do have a lot of pressure and you do like the drink, it's not gonna work that well, especially when you're drinking midweek. If you're like Wednesday or Thursday, and you yeah. still got to go to a Thursday or Friday class or something like that, it's an edgy move. Yeah. It is an edgy move. Well, just the one thing is, I uh, it's. You know, it's a stress relief, obviously. That's why they do it. They want to go mm, chill. Mm. But for me, there was just other ways to chill. You know what I mean? Mm. If I felt like I was really, really, like, you know, stressed out or had a lot of work, you know, I would go train, really, in the gym. Or in case if I had to, just watch Netflix, watch an episode, mm. have a break, watch an episode. Yeah. You know, th that was the case, really, for me. I never felt like I really ever wanted to go to town because... You, you know what you like when you drink? Your mind's not right. Your mind doesn't think straight. You know, everything's so slowed down. And when you've got all that uh, stress and or you've got this work to do, I don't really feel like having a beer or anything would ever help me. That was just my case. Um, it, only if when you're drinking to excess and things like that, I think so. I mean, when I was at uni, I didn't really drink or anything like, well, I'm still at uni. But uh, I never really... Did that uh, for stress relief? I usually just went on my phone and watched Netflix, like you. I mean, recently I've been watching um, a few clips of the Joe Biden and Trump stuff, the the most recent debate, and it's fucking hilarious how <laughs> incoherent Biden is. Really, like he's he called Trump Bush. Yeah, he called, he called no, he called him George, right? But that he's referring to George W. Bush. Um, he's not coherent at all. He. I don't think he's going to get voted in for four years and I don't think he's going to get in for eight. Well, here's the thing. I'm glad you brought up the election because it's next Tuesday. It's next Tuesday. Is November 3rd? Yeah, is that November it? 3rd, next yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. And what is it? I just wanted them to sneak, like put in a sneaky comment, go see you next Tuesday, mate. Yeah. But the thing is, Joe Biden is tipped to win this. A guy was telling me this last night, but... On the odds on the betting system, mm. on tab, you know, I think for Joe Biden to win, it's like a dollar thirty-eight. Yeah, but for Trump to win, it's like two dollars sixty or something. So you can make double your money plus more if you bet money on Trump. I would bet money on Trump. I know, but Joe Biden's tipped to win this. So was Hillary. Yeah. So was Hillary yeah. though, and uh, Trump. Yeah. I I I feel like. It's you can't trust a lot of those betting sites and things like yeah. that. But the thing is, it works out to your favor. If yeah. you know, if if un Trump is the underdog on the betting side, but you're fairly certain he is going to he is going to to win. Yeah, bet on him. You're going to double your money. The dude is like rallying like crazy though. He did like yeah. three states in a day. That's what I heard. Yeah, he's, he's doing a, a huge amount. He's done like. I haven't really heard much come out of Biden, but that's going. It's going really like he's going really, really hard at this. And I don't know if it's like a rookie move to say, "Oh yeah," because he's got all these massive rallies. You know, he's got all these people. But according to the demographics, what I've been told by polls is that a lot of his support he lost over the years. And one of the big reasons was the way that he handled the coronavirus. You know, because if you think about it, like over a million people have have been confirmed dead with this yeah, coronavirus. Yeah. You know, there's been a lot of talk saying, oh, the numbers are inflated because if you get hit by a car and you have COVID, it's a COVID death. But that doesn't change the fact that, you know, there was a pandemic. Mm. And then there's been a lot of times where, people, where Trump's just like, like people were caught him out lying and, and the way that he handled it and the way that we've had these Black Lives Matter protests, uh, the way that he's responded has actually lost a lot of uh, the support of America. So that's one of the reasons why people have want Joe Biden to power. But, you know, you can never really trust polls. That's one of Biden's biggest talking points is that I would have done stuff differently. The way he's handled the COVID pandemic is absolutely horrible. Yeah. However, you know, I, I, can, see, I can see that point. But I believe who could really deal with this properly? Yeah. You know, we're lucky in that we we are quite a low density state, WA, uh, compared to any other state in Australia, and then you compare that to American states. It's a huge difference, especially when it comes comes to like California and things like that. I'm pretty sure LA has the exact same population as our entire country. So 
the density of some of their cities are insane so that a virus is going to be a lot more traumatic and, uh, and you know, it's going to impact them a lot more. I would suggest that Trump should not have just said this will be over by Easter. Yeah. I find sometimes he's far too overconfident yes. and perhaps too optimistic about some of the tools that they have rather than saying uh, it, the realistic scenario rather than stay opti- say these op- optimistic and almost unnatural opinions and then when he says something will be o- something some vaccine should come out or something will be presented in the next two weeks and then those next two weeks roll by and there isn't it doesn't look good on him. No. I think he should give the... I think with the credible information he's given, rather than stay on the far, far uh, eccentric optimistic side, I think he should just say it how it is. He says, look, it's probably going to be around for a good time. You know, The vaccines will present themselves. However, we can't just hope for a vaccine. We need to put certain measures in place. However, we also still need to keep our economy going or else it's not, gonna, it's not going to uh, help us. I find Biden complains about Trump, but he doesn't present any ulterior, like, positive solutions. He, all I've seen him doing on Twitter is literally he just says, I think he said something today, it's, not patri- it, it, it's patriotic, it, uh, wear a mask. That his only thing is wear a mask. He hasn't presented anything with how to solve anything, you know? To be honest, I don't like either individuals. I don't like Biden. I don't like Trump. Mm. But if I want to pick one that's probably going to be, uh, you know, alive, <laughs> um, as well as be yeah, semi-coherent, yeah. uh, it's Trump. <laughs> I, need a, I, w- I did want to show you this. I'll, I'll show you this later. Um, Donald Trump has got a YouTube channel. Yeah. And really? He does. And he has 1.7 million subscribers right wow. now. And whoever is running his YouTube channel is a fucking boss. Yeah. Because he is making the funniest memes. He kept on making, like, he, he posted something that other day and it was like, uh, it was like a little mini song. It was like, it's 10 p.m. Where is Joe Biden? <laughs> and like, yeah. uh, like jo- 10 p.m. It's time for bed, Joe Biden. Like, well, when you, when you look at the, deba- the presidential debate, uh, debates mm. uh, both sides are more focused on looking at making the other side look bad rather mm. than making themselves look good that's one thing i learned anyway but you know what i'm actually looking forward to what's that uh if trump wins i'm looking forward to the absolute meltdown that happens that comes with it do you remember four years ago when Trump got elected into office? It's insane. Everyone was crying and bawling their eyes yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> they were getting so upset. Oh, well, it's not that. The world's it's ending. It's like the level of arrogance of some people, like celebrities. Like, one thing I hate it is when, like, movie stars and pop stars think that they're in some sort of position to lecture the public mm. on political views and all that sort of stuff. Like, that's one thing I can bring up in a second. Uh when ever when everyone was saying, "Oh, all these celebrities are saying, oh, Donald Trump is literally Hitler. Donald Trump is Hitler." I was like, okay, and then all these people were saying, "Oh, if Donald Trump wins, I'm moving to Canada. I'm moving to Canada." And it doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't happen. I'm like, well, I guess you ain't a man of your word then. I mean, yeah. say what you mean. I mean what you say. I mean, anyway. So the reason why I brought that point up was because Kanye West has been an absolute savage lately. Mm. Jennifer Aniston put out a tweet and said, oh, please don't vote for Kanye. It's not funny. And then he just responds saying, neither was friends. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a good point. Friends isn't that funny. But uh, yeah. I mean, it's a good TV show. But Joey, Chandler, everyone sucks. Yeah, there okay? you go. All right, Joey's okay. the best. Chandler's sarcasm is hilarious. The yeah. rest... Nothing. That's it's, gone. It's yeah, rest is gone. You know what I mean. I said this the other day. I said, I said, uh, I said, Joey, um, Joey's just funny. Yeah. Chandler, his sarcasm is funny only yeah. if you get it. Uh, Rachel, annoying. Monica, just talks about cooking, I think, and <laughs> stuff. Uh, Ross, just pathetic. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> and uh, and Phoebe is just weird. Phoebe's weird. She, she just says some stuff, and I'm like. 
<laughs> okay, like whenever she sung those stupid songs, like smelly cat, I'm like, it's fucking comedy, absolutely. <laughs> oh shit, this is where it's at. I think we just let Joey because he was just a lovable guy, and then he was always he's confused and he's like a bit slow. You know mm. what I mean? You still memes about him all the time. Do you know what? I don't like Seinfeld. I, don't like I never Seinfeld. watched it. I don't like never it. Watched I've it. never found it funny. I don't find Jerry Seinfeld that funny. I I never really. Well, I never really. I've never. Truth be told, I haven't watched any of his shows. I haven't seen any of his specials. Mm-hmm. And but I did watch that one clip. I think he did with David Letterman, or um, he did it with a presenter. And then he basically was talking about Seinfeld. And then when it stopped after the seasons, he mm. goes, "Were well, you cancelled?" And then he gets like super offended by it. cancelled. Do you know who I am? Jer- Jerry Seinfeld made millions and millions of dollars. Number one TV show. It just starts going at him for saying that. But yeah, so, well, he was before our time. He was before our time. Perhaps the comedy has changed a fair yeah. bit. Um, I just found his was, uh, it's very clean comedy. Yeah, that's which, right. Which that's is, why. But, and it's not like I'm a huge fan of like, I actually prefer clean comedy if it's done really well yeah. if you can turn a story and make it really funny and you never have to use an f word yeah. i commend you on that because crude humor is a very easy way to make a guy laugh yeah right um but i would say with i found jerry seinfeld like i'm not going to do an impression of him but it, i felt he was always like his comedy was like oh so what's the deal about toothpaste huh like yeah, yeah. it was it was like this kind of uh old school comedy and humor that I didn't, I couldn't understand, but, ha- but perhaps it was a generational thing. Yeah. So when I say he's not, f- he's not funny and friends isn't that funny. Uh, it's probably just because it's, well, you can speak to this too. It's a, uh, what am I trying to think of? It's a, uh, to me, it's not funny, but to someone else, it may be funny. Yeah, it's, it's a, well, cause comedy is subjective. Subjective. That's, that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Well, I mean, personally, I'm a big fan of dark humor, you know what I mean? But it was because I think Ricky Gervais said it best. He said it in one of his uh, he said it in one of his specials, like, you should have the right to joke about anything. You should have the right to joke about anyone. I mean, because who are they to say and who are them to say what you can't can't say? And it just has to be done very well. Yeah, and that's the point. And you know, you should be allowed to if it gets laughs, mm. and you know these guys get paid to say. It, of course, let them say it. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the other thing? And to to make jokes about dark topics is a way how people deal with things. Like he was telling a story how I think it was his mother who died or his father who died, and then what he did was he uh, at the uh, at the funeral, the priest was asking for the names of the son and he changed the name of one of them from Bill to Will or something. Mm. And then he was just saying, oh, he or she left her beloved sons to carry on her name, Ricky, James and Will. And then everyone just started laughing at the funeral. And then everyone was laughing in the crowd when he told that joke. Maybe I didn't tell exact word for word, don't quote me. But he was saying the power of humour... And the power of comedy is it allows you to take adversity and laugh at it. Mm. And he says, if you can laugh in the face of adversity, you are bulletproof. I think that is um, a good way to bring it up. I feel that sometimes it has to be done just the right way. And sometimes it's people like a Dave Chappelle are the ones that you could probably uh, give that information to and they'll turn it into something funny. But most people out there, most and even most comedians probably the the dicey stuff they can't yeah they can't make very funny stuff that will probably make most people laugh i think also ricky gervais also it works because if it comes from your personal thing that happened your personal tragedy fuck yeah you can make a joke about it like uh miss pat she makes a lot of really funny jokes and it's about herself right but if it's if you're making you're taking someone's trauma yeah. that you have no react, no thing to, and then you try and make a joke out of it. Yeah. That's when it can stir up more trouble than you were expecting. Yeah, yeah. You have to do it very, very well and perhaps even have run it by them. Yeah, you know? so one thing they actually do is they first they take the piss out of themselves mm. to show, look, you know, I'm making fun of myself, and then they move on to something dark mm. like that, really. Mm. But... 
if you think about it, like some of the, my favorite comedians or some of the most, po- even some of the most popular comedians today are the most controversial, mm. you know, or the ones that are the most dark. Dave Chappelle, if, if you've been living under, unless you've been living under some rock, you know mm. that that guy has a lot of controversy under his name, especially mm. his last Netflix special, which was beautiful. I thought it was very good. I thought it was beautiful. Bill Burr. Bill Burr. He right. loves to take the piss out of feminism. Yeah. He loves to take the piss out of women and all that sort of stuff. And he does it so well and he sells mm. out. Mm. And it oh, was another Joe Rogan. Yeah. A comedy special. He talked about Bruce Jenner and all that. Mm. You know, some of the biggest names I helped, Joey Diaz. That I don't think that man's ever said a clean joke no. in any of his specials. Never. Never. So and they're some of the best the best comedians in the world, you know? Mm. Because I feel like comedy is where you can push that tail. And here's one of the other things I want to say that gets me like riled up. Like when people try and censor comedy, they'll do that. But if you, you understand what the intent is behind it and then you'll go home and you'll watch something where a woman gets beaten or a woman gets, you know, uh, in a, a, a watch a TV show where a woman gets beaten or a woman gets raped or someone gets tortured mm. They got nothing wrong with that. And they'll say, oh, well, it's only a TV show. Well, it's the same with them. Yeah, yeah. It's only, it's, the only, it's only an act. It's remarkable how much violent TV shows are out on Netflix and things like that. Yeah, and not even that, but controversial as well. Controversial as well. And the, a lot of them will just put it under the blanket of, oh, it's just a TV show. And yes, you're correct. However, and I've done this myself, I've kind of gone away for a bit more of violent TV shows because do I do I need to enjoy something if it needs to be like some violent thing? No, yeah. it doesn't need to be gory. I don't need to watch horror movies and things yeah. like that um, to be like, oh, this is a good, sh- good show. But it's interesting how they can play with controversial stuff or they can make some of the most violent shit. Yeah, and they and then that's fine. But if you make something that's uh, expressing to actually make something a bit lighthearted, less sensitive, and for you to actually just like lose a little bit of the stigma and relax and laugh with your f- with the people around you and your peers, there seems to be a different kind of uh, connotation with comedy than it is something that's been. Uh, mass produced not like a TV th- show yeah exactly not even that but nowadays one of the, th- the types of movies that dominates box office or dominates views are movies based on real events you know what I mean and like what's one of them uh, like horror movies they love to base horror movies on like actual people like mm. serial killers like they love to base horror movies on like crimes and stuff Ted Bundy like he uh he got his own Netflix special. He got one where he was played by Zach Efron and one called the Ted Bundy Files, which was a five hour long uh five hour long TV show uh TV series. And they praise him. And I'm like, Well, why are you praising serial killers? Like if you really actually knew everything Ted Bundy would, then I wouldn't give him credit like that. But Netflix loves to do that because it sells. I yeah. What's interesting is because, you know, we're making a podcast right now, but the most popular podcasts are the true crime stuff. Yeah. And the most common things on, uh, you know, the TV, If so, I mean, past 7, p- 7 p.m., yeah. the most common thing is when they, and I was on the TV the, the other night, and it it's talking about, like, these local serial killers or local killers or... Um, crime bosses and gangsters and things like that and they're really kind of like it's almost like why do you want to watch this before bed dude like i mean in the past when i've been younger then i've sat down with my family i've watched it and things like that but like no i don't want to see like you know they show some pretty shitty stuff on tv and and it's under the under the the cloak of uh, crime documentary or crime series yeah. that 60 Minutes does and things like that. Yeah. And it's, it's fucking harsh shit to yeah. watch before going to bed because why do you want to have more knowledge why they hurt someone or did a crime this way? Yeah. How about bad shit? They did something bad, bad crime. Mm-hmm. Moving on. I'd, yeah. r- I'd rather watch something like chill and exciting rather than watch 
something about crime and horror and yeah. trauma and things like that. I don't they go into like that. a high level of detail. And it's wild why you would why you would yeah. want to know. Yeah, well, here, here was the other thing. You brought that up. It's like that whenever something like we're going a little bit deep right now, but mm. it's like when a school shooting happens. One thing that irritates me is the amount of information they try and dig up when it happens. Like they say his name, where he's from, you know, how he did it. Mm. Like when it comes to uh, these types of situations where they're absolutely fucking horrible. Ben Shapiro did it best. Don't say the shooter's name. Barely give him any credit. Don't make the story make the story as boring as you can. Don't give twenty four seven coverage, because whenever something like that happens, it absolutely dominates headlines. It's hard because you're trying to use social media and things like that to connect with people and yeah. be connect with like minded individuals, but. Quite often, if you're on it long enough, you will get sucked into like a whirlpool of negativity and horrible stuff. And a lot of the news doesn't. The news doesn't tell you like this is a guy that, you know, helped 20 old people walk up across the street. It's, yeah. it's you know, th th this guy s stole something from a petrol station and then he stole a car. And then, you know, they, they show some... And then that that's quite an easy kind of topic, but like... They show much more like bad stuff and that seems to be okay because it's the news. Whereas, to be fair, the police have already got them, most likely, right? Um, why does everyone have to know? If they want to know, then they can read an article, yeah, right? But why is it on the TV telling me about their life story yeah. and why and their whole two hours? Like some of them are like hour, two hours long on their life and what their mum and dad were like. Like... How about this is not a fun person I want to know about. Yeah, Thanks. like you don't want to make murderers famous. No. You don't want to make murder. And there's a sort of culture, there's a weird culture where we like glorify serial killers. Mm. Like people were saying, oh, Ted Bundy was handsome. Ted Bundy was handsome. Um, he was handsome for that pool of people. I have no idea um, yeah. about Ted Bundy. Yeah, well, that's the thing, though. Though Everyone would say, when everyone talks about, oh, he was wise, he was cunning, he was an intellect. He got caught. <laughs> so I can't really say that he's really that smart. Yeah, I don't really know anything uh, anything about him. I usually just dodge that stuff because yeah. I'm like, you why? Just, you just, you just, is it that because you just don't take any interest in it or you just don't want to, don't really care or don't want to know? All of above, like yeah. all of the above, like I don't, I don't, I don't care to understand. Yeah, I can't imagine this is going to benefit me anything in my That's life. Good, yeah. Also, I question why this is so in, is so interesting. Wouldn't you yeah. be more interested in something that benefits you? And I'll, it's just dark shit to watch before yeah. bed and stuff. Like, how can you imagine that you want to feel good if you're like bringing some? You don't. This doesn't make you any better, and this doesn't. It, it, I've started to watch things that uh, not just watch things because for the sake of it or don't watch things because it's popular yeah. watch it if I'm interested like uh, yeah. currently I'm watching uh, I know I'm a bit late but um, I'm a good bit into The Last Dance which is the documentary oh. with, the bar with basketball and, Ma and Michael Jordan and uh, Chicago Bulls really really interesting and like it's inspiring and yeah. it's really it is really interesting I'm trying to stay away, steer away from looking, and I think I think a lot of people might benefit from this. Is watch something if you're truly interested in, in it, yeah, or, or more so watch something if it's if it's positive. You're gonna benefit from it, benefit from you, and it's like it's positive. It's not dark. Like. Yeah. Well, after I watched the Last Dance. Uh, I thought it was amazing. I thought you it watched was, it all. I watched it all. I watched it all when it first came out, mm. and I was telling my buddies about it. Like, man, you got to watch this. This is an amazing sport because I love sports documentaries. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And I liked it so much because it gave a real like. It was such a vivid description of what was going on year to year, and I had I I knew who Michael Jordan was. Obviously, everyone knows who Michael Jordan is. You respect him more coming out of it because the things he had to go through to get to like to be like the goat yeah. of his sport yeah. was phenomenal. But not only that, but it's very it it tr tries really hard to remain unbiased because at the end of the day, Michael Jordan he wasn't perfect. 
He was a bit of a bully on the court. He was. He was a bully, and he was a bully to his teammates. And he said it best is because it was how he pushed people. He had to force it out of them. He had to make them feel like they were under pressure mm. to see how they respond. And it was with the same way that a lot of his teammates said, look, yeah, he would, if we miss a pass in training or miss a shot, he would have a, he would have a crack at us. And then we'd be like, fuck you, Michael. And then they would want to try again and actually have a higher chance of getting the shot this time. I found Michael Jordan is a very complicated person because yeah. on one hand they showed him uh, talking about Kobe and saying you know that little that little guy uh, uh, for the Lakers you know he does bring the f- he does bring the fight to you and that and he's I wouldn't say he's condescending but you know he's obviously not taking a huge notice of him but then it cuts to him talking to Kobe and Kobe's asking him questions he's trying to pick his brain and. Um, and he says to Kobe, "Hey, if you need anything, I'll I'll help you out. You know, yeah. um, just just get in touch." And he and Kobe said, "You know, a lot of people were trying to compare me to Jordan, saying things like that. But Jordan made me so much better. Yeah. I am better because of what he did and the stuff that he gave to me." So he was an interesting person in how he would bully a lot of people in the court with the trash talk. Yeah, if he. If you said someone was better than him or gave an award over him, he would take it very yeah. deeply personal and he would use that and he would say, Oh, I'm not saying I'm not saying that he didn't deserve it. I just felt I deserved it more. Yeah. And I'm gonna use that um to that like anger that he had yeah. to spur him on and get angry about it. So he, I mean, very complicated person. He loved competition. I can't yes. I think n- there was never an athlete who loved competition more than he did. He would, there were times where he was just like, you know, we were two, two, one down. And then I thought to myself, okay, then let's go. Like he liked to be down. He liked to have an opponent. He mm. wanted to, then that would like bring him up and be able to dominate him. Mm. And the other thing was he talks about is his, he, well, everyone believed he had a gambling addiction. Yeah, uh, I, I sort of believe it did happen to be a gambling addiction, but I also do believe he had a point when he had, oh, I have a competition addiction because he just loves to be competitive, like, and it would be on everything. Like, they would always pay cards at the back of the bus. They would, he would be competitive when it came to golf and he would bet on every hand. And it, it's just what, like, it was just part of his... uh part of his character, really. He was just one of those... uh One of those... You know, he had those one of those attitudes where unless there was something on the line, he wouldn't go for it. And there was another part where he used to say, oh, but they'll be playing cards in the back of the bus. And he would say, oh, they'll be doing like $1,000 a hand. Mm-hmm. And then he would force guys to uh, win. So he forced, sorry, forced guys to play. And they would be like, why, Michael? You get you make so much more money than us. And he goes, yeah, I know. But I just want to say I've got your money in my pocket. He loved that. He loved that type of like bully and competitive mentality because he would bet on a lot of things and he would be super competitive. Like there's even that game with quarters that he would play for twenty dollars. Uh, what you know, the quarter to get it yeah. closer to um closer to the line, and then he, he would he would play the the card games with Magic Johnson, and he would beat him. But he would make him like no. If he was if he was losing, yeah. he would make him play an hour longer yeah. so that he could win. Yeah. But he wouldn't stop when he ju- when he'd won. Yeah. He would stop when he when he would he well in Magic Johnson he said he would stop when he would crush me. Yeah. He would crush me. So it se- seems like he was an ultra, not even like super competitive, like ultra competitive person that had to not only win but dominate. And that, I think that's just what made him such a good basketball yeah. player is these maybe negative attributes on yeah. a different type of perspective um, that just drove him to such heights and probably, you know, probably helped with training and everything. Yeah. Uh, he had that kind of men- mentality and you that need mindset. That mentality yeah. To be at the top, you know what I mean? You need mm. to always constantly try to push, push and crush your oppo- uh, opponents. So I understand why he was like that. Just one thing I thought was a little bit upsetting was when the media tried to compare, was it tried to, what is it, relate his father's death to the gambling addiction. And I thought that was just, I thought that was just sad. I thought that was just bullshit, you know mm. what I mean? Because his father was murdered. I haven't got to that part. <laughs> oh. I knew he died. I knew I knew he did yeah. die. And then when 
Uh, I do remember that when he, when Michael Jordan did die, I think he, uh, no, no, not die. Um, I went, no, when it, Michael Jordan's dad died, he also won the, I think he won the championship game yeah. on Father's Day and he like lied down and he was, he was, I, re- I do remember that. Um, yeah. And that was meant to be a quite a magical moment for him, you know. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the Kobe one though. Yeah, well, there were little snippets of Kobe in there in, yeah. that, in that documentary. And I, you know, I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, so they're gonna do the same treatment for the Michael jo- the Last Dance and do it for Kobe's life. I would like that because but he was so young when he got into the NBA. He was like mm. nineteen, twenty, or something. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean that that's crazy. Well, how old was he when he died? Was he 40 42? 43? 43. 43. I'm not sure. Double check, actually. Yeah, but it is sad. It is really, really sad um, when it comes with Kobe because it's quite an untimely death. Like, yeah, he died in a helicopter with his daughter as well, and a whole family of people. Yeah, it is really, really, really sad. But it, I like that some of these documentaries do seem to encompass like their personality mm-hmm. and how. And everyone gets their piece to talk about him and say what they were like and how much they appreciated him, how much you know they go, the they loved him and they're sorry that he's gone and things like that. I feel like when they do make that documentary, I think it'll be a special moment for yeah. most people that had you know Kobe in their hearts. You know, it is good that they do produce documentaries like this because I mean I love Michael Jordan, but uh, you get a new kind of perspective on um on how different events took place even behind doors that you don't really get to, like hear about you know what i mean mm-hmm. it is interesting i don't think there's any i'm trying to watch more documentaries and i've missed out on the social dilemma and i really do want to watch it you did watch it shit it's shit it's shit oh, okay should i, I watch should i watch it or is it a waste of time it's a bit of a waste of time but i'll tell you i'll break it down for you i watched 30 minutes of it and i was just like all right get this off Mm. For the first 10 minutes, it's just uh, like people who worked in tech companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. They're just saying, what's, they go, the interviewer goes, what's wrong with social media? And they just go, um, uh, well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It's just, I'm like, well, go on then, spill the beans. And mm. then they didn't tell me anything I already know, didn't already know. For example, they made it so dramatic when. Oh, what is it? Oh, your phone is tracking everything you do. So let's say, for example, you know, we're big MMA fans. Mm. When you're on Instagram and we follow MMA fighters, what comes up into the algorithm is, uh, what is it? What uh, Ads for fight gear. I'm like, yeah, we didn't, or we, we knew that. And then they made it look like, so and, then I, and then I click on it and I'm like, fuck yeah, thanks Instagram. Yeah, like, there you that's go. what I wanted. Yeah, like, it's just, it's not like it was telling us something we didn't already know, or at least a lot of people knew at some conscious level. And it tracks everything you do and everything you buy to say, you know, I buy protein supplements. And then I'm going to get ads on Facebook and uh, Instagram or Snapchat for that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it, and I was just, it just got really dull, got really boring. And again, it was just, uh, you know, so did you watch the entire thing? No, I didn't watch the entire thing. You didn't thing. watch the entire thing? I didn't watch the entire thing because of how boring it was to me. So, wait, so how much did you watch? <sighs> about a good 30 minutes at least. Good 30 minutes, okay. Yeah, it was how long a, is it? I think it's about an hour. Oh, give or take. You got, so you were halfway through? At least through. an hour. So you were halfway yeah. through? Yeah, I mean, the thing is with documentaries, you've got to be careful with those because, you know, they, they can, there's a lot, some of them are propaganda, some of them have a bias or a perspective, mm. but... That one, I was just like, oh, this is this is boring as hell. It's not teaching me anything I already knew. And another one was, oh, yeah, every time you cross paths with someone, uh, f- like something happens on social media, like they could come up as a uh, friend, um, friend request or a suggested friend. Like, for example, if you're part of the same group, let's say if your friend from school who you weren't friends with was part of like a page or like to page then it automatically come up for you and your friend suggestions mm. or someone you just cross like at a party or someone you cross at like the club or whatever comes up in suggestions for you so you can find out and i'm like yeah 
I already knew that. And they made it, they just made it sound like it was so dramatic and they dramatized it. That's all. So was it made a little bit more dark and dramatic than it could have been? <sighs> yeah, wait, it was way too like dramatic, like sound effects and like blurring noises and then they had all these actors to play all these characters and I'm just like oh. they do do that in most documentaries like the, bob, the Bob Sometimes. Lazar one was dramatic I never uh, saw that one either I would have liked if they didn't make it so dramatic I yeah. would have liked if they they just had the facts and because the information itself yeah. is interesting and engages you rather than all this you know smoke and mirrors and uh, yeah. all this all this stuff going on to make it look really cool and that if the document if the the documentary is good if the information in itself is already yeah. good one thing do you have any documentaries that you like personally um to be honest i've been getting into documentaries now uh later in my life because i haven't really watched documentaries to yeah. be honest i would watch the um i i like to have like snippets of the David Attenborough ones and things like that. Yeah. I've been meaning to actually go through a lot of the documentaries and watch them because now that I've steered a little bit away from movies that I don't have to watch simply because they're popular or simply because for the sake of watching it, if I'm bored, why not watch something that's actually like interesting and it will make me better? Um, I've been looking into more documentaries. I just, I just haven't got the time to actually get around to them. Is there any that you recommend? Uh, there's a couple that I recommend. One of them is called Cartel Land. It's about the cartels in Mexico. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's pretty brutal, man. There's a lot of uncensored photos uh, in that documentary. And it talks about the war between the cartels and how they rose to power and what's mm -hmm. going on and how they combat it. The second one is one of my favourite documentaries of all time. It's called Bigger, Stronger, Faster. It's a bit of an older documentary. It was on Netflix. It's about steroids and steroid use mm -hmm. and also steroids in sports. Ooh, there's one I like. Um, Icarus. Icarus, that's one. That's, that's a, a, really that's good a brilliant one. one. The story behind that guy is insane. Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed that documentary. Like, it was some Russian guy. Like, it starts off by being, this guy is like, oh, he wants to cheat in, uh, in this bike race. So he lists this guy to help him get on you know, steroids and how to get through the testing. No, 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 it was, uh, it was an EPO. Yeah, EPO, it was EPO. It, yeah. And he wants them to get through the testing and then it turns into something else mm. and then it turns into a guy who's trying to basically flee the country because he's he's now exposed the whole doping scandal. Mm. So, you know, you know why it's called Icarus, right? Why is it called Icarus? It's because it's about the story of, uh, uh, what is it? It's a story of, it's a Greek mythology tale where it's got to do with a man who made wings of wax for his son and he told him not to fly too close to the sun mm. and then he did and then it caused his death. Yeah. So it's basically... Fly, uh, fly too close to the sun, you get burned. Yeah, it's yeah. like that. It's, it's like a saying, man. When you do risky things, oh, you're flying close to the sun, man, be careful. It's like basically it's built around that concept. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What's another good documentary? I watched that Game Changers documentary. Yeah. I mean, it was controversial, yeah, but I don't, like don't need to go into depth about that. That was one thing. I still recommend people watch it, you know, but have a very open mind when they watch it. And again, like, you know, uh, what was another one? Mm. I never watched any of those serial killer documentaries. Eh? I can't watch those. Yeah, I can't be bothered. But there was one other thing I wanted to bring up. Moving away, uh, Halloween's coming up, man. Yeah, well, they were gonna. I think I was. I wasn't questioning it here, but in America, um, I was wondering if they were going to do Halloween and trick or treating. Mm. For our, I found weird ones when they were, uh, you know, putting suggesting they was gonna say no, no Halloween because um, there's no social distancing and things like that. And they said, "Well, you keep talking about masks. It's the one day that they can wear masks. Why not?" Um, I'm glad, well, that's not like we were taking, uh, trick or treating. It's long gone, but, uh, it, I haven't, you know, I haven't taken part in Halloween in such a, in like a, such a long time. It'll be weird to see people walking about with all their costumes on in a, almost like a post COVID, mm. uh, world in WA. That'll be weird. Really, really weird to see. It's the one day when no one debates about masks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And all the silly costumes that everyone wears. What I am questioning is 
because there's Halloween, are a lot of people going to break protocol and are they going to spike up COVID cases? Oh, who knows? Who knows really? Because it's the exact same with the protests. I uh, can't see it happening here, but if it was... Because um, Melbourne have just came out of their, yeah. their big lockdown. I question whether or not they're going to go back into it if they have a big, huge Halloween and well, all the people go out. Well, they're celebrating out of lockdown as well. Sorry? They were celebrating coming out of lockdown yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 big time, big time. Yeah, they would have to because I think it's the second time they've gone into lockdown. That would have been a big night out in the town. It would have been a huge night out <laughs> in the town. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the situation was pretty severe over there. So I understand that people were stressed and stuck at home all the time and couldn't work or on JobKeeper. But so, yeah, they would want to go out. They would want to let off some steam and it just comes down to, you know, was it a, a wise decision to let them out that late? And Victoria is still going for it. I think they had three new cases today. Mm. Yeah. It's not that, it's not that bad. It's, it's a lot better bad. than it, it used to be. It used to be, it used to be crazy. When they had a big spike, it was like 50. We haven't had any local community transmissions though. No. We've still got cases here in Perth. I think we've got about 16. No, we've got more than that, way more than that. But they were all, a lot of them came from that boat. Yeah, we're very um, we're very fortunate in the fact that, you know, if you run the numbers, there, there's a huge amount of people that have died in America. I think it's something like 200,000 or something yeah. like that. Um, what I found really good for us is that uh, I think there's only eight or nine that have died in Western Australia, mm -hmm. which is pretty incredible, let's yeah. be real. Um, and I think across Australia, it's about 800 maybe close to 900 compared to the crazy amount that's in America. And, oh, yeah. And uh, I think Brazil is quite high up there as well. I mean, oh. I know for sure China's lying. They Brazil is terrible, man. China's lying. Yeah. China's so. lying. Anyway, there's one more thing I wanted to bring up on the positive note. Oh. Uh, did you watch, because I mentioned Kanye West at the start of this, did you watch the Kanye West? I did watch pod the podcast, and it is interesting because he's um, – he's He's got 10 different ideas yeah. formulating at the same time. He doesn't... I mean, I can say I my head does it as well and goes... Da, 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 da. Mine does it jumping from ideas. Yeah. But he... My idea might jump, 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 yeah. jump. And they're not fully formed, but it'll jump to something else, yeah. right? And be a bit erratic and rapid. That's what my mind is like. But his is... 10 moving out in yeah. different directions at the same time. He's running on like a... It's like this. He, Joe Reagan said it best. He said he's misunderstood mm. because let's say average people run on like a double A battery or yeah. run on like a triple A battery. That dude's like running on a full car battery because he's just got all these ideas that are just popping off in his head or mm. all these like things he's thinking about. The way that he spoke as well, like he would go on these like really long like tangents or rants and then I'd just be like some moments where I'm like, I just can't comprehend what the guy's saying. I think it's also... It's interesting, though. The I can't really think of that guy as president. <laughs> I actually can. You can? I can't. I can. I can imagine him as a president for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, you got Reagan, you got Trump, and if you get a Kanye, fuck it. Why not? Yeah. I, th I feel like Kanye has such an extreme imagination and, uh, you know, his brain is a big engine and that his thought process of, like, spitting out lots and lots of ideas... Um, is very good because he's very creative. I find he would work well if you pair him with... Because, let's be real, Kanye, outside of music and things like that, there's nothing really else that's in his wheelhouse. Yeah. If you put... It, he does well... Well, there's music and there's designing. But his creative mind does very well when you pair him up with a logical person that is an engineer or something like that. I feel like if you pair him up with... A lot of people, he has the brain to think outside the box and create a creative idea that's very different that someone hasn't thought of before because someone's logical mind that is very smart in terms of remembering things and understanding complicated concepts like mathematics, physics, and things like that yeah. has such a rigid mind that they can't be creative the way Kanye can. Yeah. So I feel like... I'm not just saying about Kanye. I feel like you really could put a very creative person with a very logical uh, intellectual 
and then Kanye or the very creative person will bring up an idea that's outside the box and it's the logical person's job to make it work. Yes. I feel like that's what Kanye is doing when he was talking about his monastery and he wants to talk about their learning stuff and having schools, but they're producing their own uh, produce and and eating off the land, which is good. I respect that. I think it's very good traditionally um, and very good for the future because you're relearning skills that your ancestors would have been very adept in. Uh, I think it's a good way to blend the past and the future together with better technology and things like that. I find he's not that smart when it comes to the understanding the concepts, when it comes to like the sciences and things like that. But I do find he has such a creative mind that if you do pair him up with someone logical, the logical person will just have their job is just to be able to put a, his creative vision on paper and make it work. Yeah. I feel like that. Yeah. That that's No, I don't think that uh Kanye is an amazing candidate, yeah. but <laughs> but I don't think many of America's candidates have been very good. Yeah. Um but it is interesting to see if Kanye even puts any kind of impact on the 2020 uh elections, but he says himself he I wish feels he like 2024 he's 100% going to win. Yeah, I wish uh I wish he had a debate with Joe Biden and Trump. I wonder how that would have gone. Well, the thing is Trump he's actually a big fan of Trump. He is a huge fan he's of a Trump. Fan of Drew, he's a big fan of Trump. He likes him a lot. I mean, he even met with him at Trump Tower before the election and then he there was this point where he met with him in the White House. Mm. You know, so him do I see him as president? No. I, I can't really see him as president, but one thing, there was two things. I kind of respected him a little bit more off that podcast because I didn't know about the things that he was doing and he was spending all this money to help children, mm. educate children. The second one I didn't know is he's such a religious man. He's he's heavily, heavily Christian. I knew about his Sunday service. And yeah, it is really cool that. to watch. And the Sundays, have you never watched the Sunday no, service? No, I haven't. Um, I mean, you probably can't watch it now because it's, it's one. Uh, it's pretty much a hundred percent audio for you to actually enjoy it. So if you turn off the audio, then you wouldn't be able to enjoy it um, live. But I feel like you should watch the Sunday service because it's almost like a big. Uh, it's like a big symphony of people, mm-hmm. um, all enjoying their culture but mixing it with their religion. And to be honest, I'm not a religious pers- person. Maybe yeah, going right. towards the more spiritual side, but. Um, it is cool to see them enjoy their faith in such a like vibrant way. It's honestly, it actually um, does make church look cool. It yeah. does. Ma- no, honestly, yeah. if you watch Sunday service and things like that, him um, making these really cool symphonies and songs with a huge amount of people, it's like it's it's really 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 cool to see. It's like a acapella symphony with technology in a very open space. One of the times they did it was in uh, Kanye designed this this building and it's just all white walls. It's all, v- and white is like a nice, uh, it's meant to be more of a holy color. It's yeah, plain, it's, it's, it's pure, simple, it's yeah. pure. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it. I think the what, what he's doing, he's making a lot of positive things. Yeah, That's what I see. And I think, um, I think he's a bit more, He's a bit more of a philanthropist. Yeah, he's, he's than on a, a politician. Most people, I understand why he's so famous. Like he's making clothes, his music, he's an actor, he's rapper, producer, about a hundred things on his resume. Yeah, because he runs at such a high, his brain runs at such a high level. You know what I mean? So people like that again. That's what we're saying about people like him. You know, they they run at a very different level to most people, and their minds think very differently to most people. Again, like I respected him a lot for the things he's doing. I respect him that he went on the podcast because people were arguing for ye- waiting for years for him to go on that Kanye West podcast. So Kanye West was to go on the Joe Rogan podcast, uh, and now Joe Rogan's just viewership's just taken off ever since the Spotify deal. Mm. Stocks for Spotify shot through the roof. Yeah, when Joe Rogan moved just to Spotify. Yeah. Uh, 
And he got Matthew McConaughey on there recently as well. That's one I'm listening to. Uh, Roy Jones Jr. He had Roy that Jones as well. Jr., yeah. yeah. Looking forward to that. It, um, it's not that I think Joe Rogan's podcast is so amazing. It's that he just gets cool guests on. Yeah. And if there were more mainstream podcasts out there that had these cool guests on, then I would also watch them. It's yeah. just right now he's, um, I think as he's transitioning to Spotify, he's yeah. getting some cool guests. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's because sometimes I, I watch him because I love to, you know, listen to him and all that. But sometimes I listen to him just because of the people that he brings on. Mm. For a guy like Kanye West, he probably comes on once in a lifetime. Of course I'm going to listen to him because of how high he is. Uh, you know, I love it when he puts Joey Diaz on there. I always listen to Joey Diaz because I'm a big fan of him. You know, and Matthew McConaughey, because when do we ever see Matthew McConaughey on a podcast? Exactly. It's it's like that, really. Mm. You know? Uh, yeah. Anyway, anything else you want to bring up? Not really. Um, That was a really cool podcast. That was a good one. That was probably one of the best. Anyway, guys, uh, we'll see you on Sunday. We're going to be watching and reviewing the Anderson Silva's last fight. Anderson, Anderson Silva's last fight. He's 45 years old. He's going to be fighting Uriah Hall. Uh, a lot of people have been uh, questioning and maybe just like just generally discussing whether or not he's going to finish his last fight uh, with a win. Uh, I think at 45 years old, he's still the spider. And I think he threw some things in his fight with Anderson, uh, not uh, Israel Adesanya, that were, you know, quite like I thought his display of his skills against Adesanya was very good. Um, I think Uriah Hall is another animal. Yeah. And I feel like he's young, he's in his prime, actually, probably before his prime, to be honest. And um, I think Uriah Hall, he's going to be a real, I think he's going to be a top contender one day. So I think it's a tough night for Anderson Silva. Um, to finish on. They haven't given him an easy fight to finish. They definitely didn't give him a uh, bloody tomato can. Mm -hmm. But this is the the spider that we're talking about. Anything can happen in an MMA fight. So not picking anyone, to be fair. Um, it'll be one hell of a fight. And it's it's very cool to see it on a, on a fight night because these fight nights have been f pretty fire in 2020. So, yeah, cool. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening. Take care, guys. Bye. All the best.